everyone, Mary here, and we are going to talk in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about acceleration. Definition of acceleration, acceleration is defined as the rate of change of velocity, or how quickly an object speeds up, or how quickly it slows down. Now, you have a gut instinct about acceleration. Um, this definition, this very specific definition we're going to talk about a lot in this lesson, but I wanted to pick out some examples to kind of get us started. When we talk about acceleration, it's how quickly an object speeds up or slows down. So there are a whole bunch of supercars out there, uh, Bugattis, Hennessys, Koenigseggs, and they're always switching positions at the top of the pile of who exactly is the fastest production car in the world. Um, this is one of the top handful, um, the Koenigsegg a Gera RS, top speed 284 miles per hour, and it can go from 0 to 62 miles an hour, or 100 kilometers per hour, in 2.8 seconds. Now, that's kind of quick. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, and then you're already going 60 miles an hour. So this is this is speedy. This car has a huge engine, um, and it has lots of acceleration. By contrast, I, I don't guarantee this is the slowest accelerating car in the world, but I tried to probably tried to find one that was kind of slow. This is a 1976 Volkswagen Super Beetle, um, 0 to 60 miles an hour, 23.8 seconds. Now, I know a lot of you are broke college students, and you might be driving something like this, that when you were trying to merge on, on the highway, um, you're saying a lot of prayers as you go because your little car, you step on the gas, but it does not want to accelerate very fast. This is something that does not speed up quickly. This is something that speeds up nutty quickly. And that idea of changing velocity, that's what I mean when I talk about acceleration. So here's the equation for acceleration. This is another equation I highly recommend you write down and put on your formula sheet. Acceleration is change in velocity divided by change in time. Um, acceleration units are meters per second squared. Velocity in MKS units are meters per second and time, of course, is seconds. These are the most common units we're going to see in physics. But let's talk about these crazy acceleration units, meters per second squared. That, how, do, how the heck do you get squared time? It just looks odd. Well, when you talk about acceleration, it's the change in speed, meters per second, how much faster every second. It's some sort of a velocity unit divided by some sort of a time unit. So in the previous slide, we were talking about cars. It's change in miles per hour, a velocity, per second. That's what we're talking about in that previous slide when we talked about cars going from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 4.2 seconds or whatever. Now this squared seconds, where the heck does that come from? Well, that actually comes from the equation. If you've got meters per second, which is our velocity unit, divided by time units, seconds, you remember when you are dividing fractions, you invert and multiply. So meters per second times 1 over second. You have meters and seconds times seconds is seconds squared. That's where those wacky um, acceleration units come from. It is just mathematically what happens when you start multiplying and dividing with fractions. Now, acceleration is a vector, which is a lovely thing um, when you step on the gas in your car. It is really nice to know that there is a direction associated with it, and that's not going to be a big surprise if your car is going to go left, right, up, or down. Um, you definitely know which direction you should be accelerating in. But one of the things that makes this interesting is you can have an acceleration. You can have positive accelerations, and you can also have negative accelerations. We'll talk about negative accelerations in a moment. A positive acceleration basically means you can either be speeding up, which this gentleman is taking off in this race and he's speeding up, or you have a car that is accelerating away from a stop sign and speeding up. Or long ago and far away, we talked about vectors can have direction. And if you define this direction as positive and this direction as negative, if your object is accelerating in a positive direction, accelerating in a positive direction, that can be a positive acceleration. Now, 
because of this, a couple other wacky things can happen. We can also get negative acceleration. Now, negative acceleration means you are either slowing down or you're accelerating in a negative direction. What do I mean? Okay, your car is coming up to a stop sign. And as you approach the stop sign, you have some sort of a velocity and that velocity goes down to zero when you get to the intersection. You are slowing down. In physics, there are not separate equations for deceleration. How do we deal with it? We put a negative sign in front of acceleration. So slowing down is a negative acceleration or a deceleration. The other thing that can be wacky is a negative acceleration can also mean that you're accelerating in a negative direction. So if you drop an object, if we call this direction um, a negative direction and we call down negative and up positive and this golf ball is dropped, as the ball is dropped, yes, it's accelerating, yes, it's speeding up, but it's speeding up in the direction that you and I have defined as down. Every problem is going to be a little different, and we'll talk about this situation when we go through every single problem. Here's one more of these negative accelerations I want you to think about. You're in your car, you are sitting in your garage, and you speed up as you back out of the garage. So you are accelerating, you're speeding up as you come back out of your garage, but you are going in a negative direction if you define this direction as negative and this one going into the garage as positive. Don't worry your head about exactly which one's positive and negative at this moment. Every single problem we go through will talk about what's positive and what's negative. There are three different ways to accelerate in physics and it's a kind of a weird and, and wacky thing, but here's how it works. Acceleration is defined as the rate of change of velocity, or how quickly velocity changes. Now, velocity is a vector. So when you change your velocity, you are accelerating according to the definition of acceleration. It's how quickly you change that velocity. So how can you change your velocity? Well, one way to change your velocity is to speed up. That's the common one. If you asked anybody on the street, what does it mean to accelerate? Most people are going to say speed up. But it can also mean slow down because it means to change your velocity. So speeding up, slowing down, they're both in the rules of physics a ray of accelerating. The third one is also a little bit wacky. Because velocity is a vector and it indicates something going in a straight line at a steady speed, Another way to accelerate in physics is actually to change direction. So you can also change direction, and that means you are going to move something or adjust something in your velocity vector. So actually turning or going in a circle means accelerating in physics. And I'm setting you up for future chapters. We're not going to worry too much about the change of direction right this second, but it's going to come in handy later. So I've got a question for you. What are the three controls in your car that are going to help you or make the car accelerate? Okay, hit pause, think about this, then we'll go through them. Three controls make your car accelerate. You have them? Okay. Speed up, well, that's your gas pedal. Slow down, that's going to be your brakes. And what's the third control in your car that can help you change direction? You bet your boots, that is your steering wheel. Now, you ask your Uncle Farley if a uh, steering wheel is a means of accelerating your car, you might have quite the, quite the long debate on that one. And I'm going to, I printed that and I'm just going to go through that quickly. Okay, let's talk about g-forces. G-forces are a um, way of describing acceleration. And I, I, the name is very confusing because it says force. It says force right there in the name. It's not a force. When we talk about g-forces, we are actually talking about multiples of the acceleration of gravity. 
Gravity is constant. We'll talk about in the next video, we'll talk a lot about acceleration of gravity. Um, but the acceleration of gravity is a constant 9.8 meters per second squared anytime you are near the surface of the Earth and something's in free fall. So very often we want to know how many multiples of normal Earth's gravity an object is accelerating, and those are described as g-forces. But they're not a force, they're actually a measure of the amount of acceleration. In the next problem we're going to do, we are going to calculate the number of g's someone is exposed to. And that is going to be found by taking their rate of acceleration, dividing by the acceleration of gravity. So acceleration divided by the acceleration of gravity. And I suggest you write that formula down in your formula sheet. You're going to need that. Now, acceleration is going to be in meters per second squared. Acceleration of gravity is meters per second squared. So what units are on g's? No units. g's is a unitless number. And the reason is because it is a ratio. It is a comparison between rate of acceleration and the acceleration of gravity. G's is the total descriptor. Here's my problem. I have a friend who is a airline pilot and uh, he flies 747s. And so I got some of the information from him and then of course some from the internet. So on a takeoff roll, a 747 aircraft will accelerate from zero speed at the end of the runway up to about 175 miles per hour. That's takeoff speed in a 747. And that's going to occur in 3.5 seconds. Now, you and I, sitting in the aircraft, when the airplane takes off, you are going to feel pushed back into your seat. It's really going to be the inertia that you are experiencing, the tendency of your body to resist acceleration that you're going to actually feel. But you're going to feel pressed back in the seat as, really, the seat accelerates you forward. I want to know how many Gs you're going to experience as that aircraft accelerates. So this is going to be a two-part problem. Part one, I have to find acceleration. And part two, I have to find g's. So part two is going to be g's. So let's do this first. To find acceleration, acceleration is change in velocity divided by change in time. So my change in velocity is, it goes from zero up to 175 miles per hour. So that's my change in velocity. And the time is going to be 35.2 seconds. Now some of you right now are yelling at me and saying, no, no, Mary, you can't do that because I'm mixing miles and hours and seconds. Oh my, that's just not pretty. So I'm going to take a moment and I'm going to convert 175 miles per hour into my MKS units of meters and seconds because that's going to make the second part easier. So let's go ahead and do a conversion. I'm going to change pens here to denote a new part of the problem. 175 miles per hour. Okay, I'm going to get rid of miles, go to meters, 1609 meters in a mile. And hours, get rid of hours, go to seconds. There are 3,600 seconds in an hour. I double check, everything's canceled. I end with meters per second. And when I grab my calculator and do that, what do I end up with? Um, I end up with, da, 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 I don't know, I gotta do the math. Um, I thought I had it done. 175 times 1609 divided by 3,600. I ended up with 78.2 meters per second. So now I can put that in my equation up here. My change in velocity, 78.2 meters per second, 35.2 seconds. And when I do that division, I ended up with 2.22 meters per second squared. That's the rate of acceleration you feel in the aircraft. Now I want to know g's. Well, g's, number of g's, is going to be the rate of acceleration divided by the acceleration of gravity. So my 2.22 meters per second squared, 9.80 meters per second squared. And when I do that, I ended up with point, just about 0.23 
G's. So next time you are in a big aircraft and it is on its take-up ro takeoff roll and you want to impress your seatmates with how nerdy and smart you are, it's about a quarter of a G. That's not not nothing, but it's not too bad. It doesn't make you pass out, that's for sure. Okay, that will do us for acceleration, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.